Gary and Dave shared credit on the white bus But as things advanced, their relationship was on the rocks Maybe less people know his name But he revolutionized war games With the first fantasy campaign Hey up Pete, Shandy Andy here. Just replying in your playing the to your playing the game episode. I think we've uh, already found out we were both playing uh, role playing games in the same town in North Wales at the same time. In nineteen eighty one I was wondering, did you get your Malve box set? from a shop in Rill, because that's where I got mine. I believe it was in the summer of 81. It was a little uh, sort of gift shop, I seem to remember, that also sold games. I certainly got my Mulvey and Expert, uh, uh, Cook uh, Marsh Expert box set from there. Also, there was Cluid Books in Clan Didno, where I got my Dungeon Master's Guide from, but that might have been 82, 83, a little later. And I also seem to remember there was a shop in Hollywell, because I seem to remember riding out there on bikes with a few of my mates once to have a look at uh, what they had. So just an alternative uh, there is, uh, from getting it mail order. What do you think? Hi, Shandy Andy. Oh, yes. I remember that little shop in Rill, uh, not far off the seafront. Didn't buy any books from there, but I did buy some of my old uh, figures from there. Um, and I recently came into possession of some of my figures from my dad. He was uh, clearing out at home and found an old wooden box. And there's some of my original figures I bought from that shopping row, painted really badly. Maybe I'll uh, put a picture up on the Audio Dungeon Discord. I also remember being in that shop one day, um, buying some stuff. And there was some, some I think at the time, I was, I was a bit older and there was some young kid in there. And I was buying the figures and he said, um, do you play Dungeons and Dragons? Yes, I said. He said, oh, what are you? said a uh, third level fighter he said it's third level fighter is that all he said uh, we're like 12th level wizards i said well how long have you been playing he said a year what about you i said i've been playing 15 years son older than you yeah and also remember cluid books yeah i used to order some books from there i might have well have got my um books my advanced dungeon and dragon books from there so yeah but uh those were the times eh? pre-internet the old little uh, adverts in the back and trying to order books from Smiths and uh, Cluid Books, Pfft, never easy. And you used to get some really funny looks um, from the woman behind the counter when you order these titles. But hey, that's, that's the way it was. And Shandy Andy has a podcast. It's called Unguarded Treasure B52. So if you haven't already checked Shandy Andy out, check out that podcast too. Now onto the main subject. This episode of Anchorites Appreciate Artisan Month, I'm going to talk about one of my own some heroes for the RPG movement. And the person I picked is Professor John Eric Holmes. John Eric Holmes, he was a medical doctor, he was a professor of neurology, and had served two years in the Marine Corps in Korea. And with his son, he was playing the original three little brown box of Dungeons and Dragons, which were released by TSR in 1974. And the problem with the original three little brown books was, they weren't an instruction on how to play Dungeons and Dragons, they were a reference book for people who were already playing, and they were designed so that they could pick them up to refer to. And John Eric Holmes wrote to Gary Gygax at TSR and said, look, what you really need to get new players into the game is a comprehensive instruction set on how to play this game. Gygax agreed with him that it was something that was needed, but he didn't have the time to do it and didn't know how to do it. And that is when John Eric Holmes said to Gygax, look, I can do it for you. And Gygax agreed. And this is what is commonly known to today as the Holmes edition, Dungeons and Dragons. Now in John Eric Holmes' own words, he tried to make sense of the, the three little brown books and tried to write it in such a way that somebody who had never played the game before could actually play the game. 
And in his own words, he said that he did have some arguments with Gygax of what stuff should go in and what shouldn't go in. Where possible, he tried to use the original wording from these three little brown books. But in areas where it wasn't clear, then he had to rewrite it himself. And he also gave suggestions to Gygax of some changes that could be made. Some were accepted and some were not. So without John Eric Holmes's version of Dungeons and Dragons, it may never have come, become as popular as it later did, because it took the game to a completely new audience. And when Tom Moldvay and uh, Cook later did their versions, they referred back to Holmes's version. Sadly, Professor John Eric Holmes didn't write a lot more well, he didn't write any more RPGs. He wrote a lot of mag He wrote also of um, articles in um, Dragon Magazine, referring to the Dungeons and Dragons. But what he did give us was a comprehensive set of rules, and he gave us the first ever published adventure for the game, which was the sample dungeon in it, which is now known as the Tower of Xenopus. And there, for the first time, players could get an idea of how to run a dungeon and how to run an adventure. Because before, in the Three Little Brown Books, it was all presented to you, or the rules, or the reference rules, but it didn't explain how how you would put those together and form a game. Holmes did that with his Tower of Xenopus. So what did John Eric Holmes give to the hobby besides that? Well, as I said, he wrote some articles for Dragon Magazine and for some other publications. And like his father before him, who was also in the Navy, he wrote some, some, some stories. His father apparently wrote several short stories as well as some technical manuals. And John Eric Holmes followed in his father's footsteps and also wrote some stories. His family said at his funeral that he was a massive um, book fan and in particular, uh, Edgar Rice Burroughs, and he did publish two novels that were sanctioned by the uh, Burroughs um, Foundation, and he wrote set in the uh, Conan universe, which was Mahals of Pelicador, and later the Red Axe of Pelicador. He also wrote a Buck Rogers sequel as well. So he was a uh, he was a, a gifted man with good sense of diction and explanation. And that really shows in the Holmes version of the rules that he's tried his best to explain it to the reader. And he's tried to fill in the gaps left by Gygax. And he admits later on that he didn't fill all the gaps in, but he did his best. And uh, he actually does praise what Mulvey brought to the table later on, um, very honorably. And it's somebody we shouldn't forget. John Eric Holmes gave us something readable and something for later editors to follow on from. So um, that is my nomination for Ung Sung Heroes, Professor John Eric Holmes. You have been listening to the Dragon's Real Podcast. My name is Pete Jones. Find more information on my website at petejones.neocities.org. The opening music was Arson by TJ Drennan. The closing music was Fretless by Kevin McLeod.